Good afternoon. This is uh, Frank Conkling, and this is the Panda Consulting Deep Dive for the month of September, the year 2020. So we are um, on this workshop. We're actually going to be looking at the Panda or the Parcel Drafter um, add-in for the um, Web App Builder, and how to integrate that, and then what it looks like when you're actually using it inside of ArcGIS Parcel Fabric, and how it actually looks and, and how it works and that sort of thing. So before we start, let's sort of look at how do you actually get the Parcel Drafter if you want. And we just want to be aware that the way in which you get the Parcel Drafter has changed um between updates and iterations and such all right so the best way that i have found is to go and point your web browser to solutions.arcgis.com all right and under that you will find industries over on the left hand side and if you click on land local government you'll see land records and as you go down you'll find all the solutions and it turns out that on my page it's on the parcel drafters actually in the very lowest tier and if you hover over it you will get a learn more link in which actually will bring it up all right now this is a link to the traditional sort of setup here but if you go over to the arcgs online and again so so the links over on the left that's if you want to go and implement this in your on-premises portal the links on your right over here this is if you wish to go and implement it on ArcGIS Online. All right, so there is a difference between the two. And once you click on that, again, you get over there, and when you click on that solution, it will go and show you and tell you how to go and configure it and automatically go and load it into ArcGIS Online for you. It's a little disconcerting the first time in which you do this and that it appeared to work. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and go to my ArcGIS Online account and look at my content. And I actually have a group here called Parcel Drafter. And it put in place a Parcel Drafter feature layer, a Tax Parcels feature layer, site address feature layer, a solution component, and for which I wound up then creating and opening up the web map and the web mapping application. So first let's go to the web map and look at that. And when I open that up inside of a web map, I found, and uh, let's let this go and, and work. I found that I had, no, don't want to do that yet. I had parcel drafter parcels, parcel drafter lines, site addresses, and I also had tax parcels in there. I didn't want to use those layers. Well, I didn't want to use the parcels and the site addresses. I actually wanted to use another uh, county's feature class or feature layers that I had already loaded onto ArcGIS Online. So I loaded those into my map here. This is a, a city in New York, Tonawanda. Here's the parcel, the polygon layer, and here's the line with dimension layer. I loaded them in, set them up with labeling as I normally want to. You know, I would manage the labels, tell it what I want to do here. Same way with dimensions. Now, interestingly, these two feature classes are coming out of a 
ArcGIS parcel fabric. If we actually go and look at them, and let's look at the details here. And including, let me go back here, some of the data here. I will see that it has global ID, created by, retired by, the direction fields, the distance fields. This is, in fact, the line feature class for my lot parcels inside of ArcGIS parcel fabric that I went and uploaded. I did a, a share a web layer with these two layers on them, uploaded it to ArcGIS online. So they're now available for me to use as my base layers. All right. And once I've had my, my web map all configured, I went and saved it out. And I then pulled up Let's go here one more time. Let's go back to home, my content. And I then went and created this parcel drafter here and edit it. told it that in fact my web map was my parcel drafting web map here used that and went and configured my widget here all right configuring the widget asked me to go and tell it what layers it wishes to have become the working layers, the parcel layer and the line layer. Now, again, by going and using the solution to create these two layers, I didn't have to do anything else. Normally, if you attempt to go and use a standard feature service that you have up there, a hosted feature service, it will tell you that you don't have a relationship between the parcels and the lines, and it won't work. It's better to let the solution go and put it together for you because it will also then have all the required fields in it. So once I go in there, I can go and it tells me, okay, what do you want to do? Here's my other parcel layer. And if I go, it says, oh, you don't have a valid. Let's do that again. It says you don't have a valid related layer with it. But if I choose a parcel drafter layer, it does. And it says, okay, I can use those two for it. Once I've set that, then it's just setting up the rest of these. And there are three different tabs for this. The first is the preview for how big do you want the starting symbol? What about scaling and rotating symbols? What layers or what attribute? Fields are you going to be using for the bearing, the distance, the radius, arc length, all of those. Since I um, let the solution set it up for me, they are all set up correctly, so I don't have to worry about it. By the way, if you note, this has a, a line type which comes from the arc map parcel fabric. So this thing is actually originally set up and it's still working for the arc map parcel fabric, but it still works with this. So then you have to set what who, what is the default line type that's gonna be put in here. And I told it to choose the boundary line and I can set the symbology for it if I want. And then it goes to, well, what about other fields such as rotation, misclosure, stated area, scale and everything? I had that set up. Once I've set it up for the default parcel layers, I can go into attribute settings and I can tell it whether I want to use aliases, whether I want to use the standard web map pop-up settings or not. For this demo, I just said, just use the pop-up settings, but we can set it up so that you use aliases in here and you set different actions on here. 
I also have advanced settings under this widget, which allow me to go and tell it, what am I going to snap to? And in this case, I want it to snap both to the Tanawanda parcel polygons together with the parcel drafter lines that I draw and the parcel drafter polygons that I draw. I then also have told it how close I want to make it so that I close these parcels, what the misclosure is, and whether or not there's a staffing tolerance in here. These are, by the way, the defaults, so I really didn't have to do much on those. Once you're done setting the, sit, the settings and just checking them out for these three layers, or these three tabs, you can just go ahead and hit, hit OK. I'm just going to hit um, Cancel on here. And I have set up this application with the Web Drafter widget on here. I've also told it, by default, if I hit this little button down on the bottom here, if I undo that, this will actually not be opened up automatically. So if I click this button here, that will automatically be the widget that opens up for me. I can then go down here, and if I have any changes, I can hit Saved, and it will save this application out. Now, once it saves it out, you could then go and launch it, and actually go and have it launch and come up to and this is what it looks like. All right. If I go in here, I can see there's a couple of, of things already in here. So this is one that somebody has put in. And so let's talk about how you actually input a traverse in. All right. By the way, Chris is here and he is actually going and moderating the chat window. So if you have any questions, any comments, anything that I've gone over too quickly or not gone over, put it in the chat window and Chris will interrupt me and make sure that we take care of that. All right. Also, so, if you haven't gotten the link to the parcel drafter, let me know and I'll, I'll repost it. But I think everyone should have it right now. Okay. So with the parcel drafter, there's two primary components in here. One is it's looking for you to go and create a Traverse file. So if I say start Traverse, it will allow me to either select a point on here, and if you'll note, it's actually snapping to my existing parcel polygon boundaries. So I can actually start there, or I could have put a bearing in this, or excuse me, a coordinate value in there if I was going to a specific coordinate point. Then it asked me to go in and input all of these settings. So let me input the, the, the bearing and such. Let me Before I start this, let me go to my settings tab and make sure that you understand how to set those. So on my settings tab, I set it up so that the inputs would be quadrant bearing, degrees, minutes, and seconds, feet, and the acreage, the area would be calculated as acres, and the circular curve parameters would be the radius and the arc length. If I set them on my application, they get saved. If I don't set them, you might have to do that every time it gets redisplayed. So I did go in and set that on my application. So now I'll use the same sort of input that we have with the ArcGIS parcel fabric. I can use 45 degrees northeast and put a length in there. In this case, let's do 100 feet. One thing you will notice is that when I hit return here, it doesn't presume that I'm just putting in a straight line. So it'll move over to the radius and I have to hit return again in order for me to be able to see what my line actually is that's been drawn. Then I can go and input, in fact, that I want to go southeast 45 degrees. I hit enter. In this case, I'm only going to do 50 feet. And again, you have to remember to click through the radius. 
Now 45 degrees southwest for 100 feet. Click through and then 45 degrees northwest. And this is going to be 50 feet and click through. And when I do that, it will automatically close it and tell me how far or, or what the acreage is. If it turns out that I have a different stated area, I can input that on there. Now, once I've done the overall boundary, I then have the ability to go and do a rotation and a scaling. So in this case, I'm going to go and actually rotate this. So I'll click on the rotate button. And if I click here, it allows me to go and digitize what the rotation is. So I can click here and just go and rotate it here to get it to there. I could have actually gone and just keyed in the rotation angle if I knew. I could also go and scale up if I were to scale up here. If I were to scale up here, come on. I could scale this up so it basically will scale up to the same amount here. I'm not going to do that. The next option is, well, what about the parcel itself that's going to be created? And if I expose this, is there a plan associated with it? One of the things that I've, I've not seen yet is where this plan directly correlates to a record name. It doesn't do that yet, but we're going to take care of that. So the plan name field as it relates to ArcGIS parcel fabric is sort of useless. ArcMap parcel fabric is used, but the parcel name, um, so let's just call this first demo for me. All right. And then I can also go and tell it the document type, whether it's a deed split or whatever. And once I'm done, I can hit save. And it will tell me that it has been saved. All right. So when I'm creating something new, it allows me to go in there and create the demo to create that on here and put it in here, inputting again the information that I have available to it. If I want to go and edit this in any way, I can use this edit traverse and click on the parcel and it will go and search and use that parcel and allow me to go and update any of the information that's included on there, including the angle, including the parcel information in here and such. I could then save those changes or I could just go and click delete and it will delete the lines and the parcel that was created as part of that sort of transaction. All right, I'm gonna cancel that out. You discard those changes. So as, a, as an HTML enabled way to go and input legal descriptions, this is fairly good. Not, I mean, it, you can't use it for, um, for aliquot breakdown, but you can get, then go in there and actually input things. So what happens if, I, if my legal description, I, I don't know exactly how it is or how big it is or anything, I can go in there and I can go and input a traverse. All right. But instead of inputting these values in here, I can click on digitize and it will allow me to go and just digitize it in and do the same thing and just save that. All right. So it will allow me to either input the bearings and distances, or it will allow me to go and just digitize it on the screen. Digitizing it on the screen, you don't have the ability to go and have measurements as far as how big it is or, or um, dividing a line in half or anything like that, but it at least gives you a visual element on there. All right, any questions yet? 
I hear it. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, in regards to the rotation you did earlier, does it snap to the line? Because it looks like there's a little space in the northwest corner of that first demo. Yep, I don't think it did. All right, so let's go in here. It does not. So when I do the rotation angle, all right, I can tell it. I hate that. It sort of freezes it on me. When I do the rotation, there's where it's going to rotate from. All right. And again, I can't. I'm going to rotate it. And I don't see where it actually snaps to it. Yeah. All okay. right. So it's it's an approximation. Mm -hmm. It's not. This is not highly accurate. This is not going to take over yet for what we do as parcel mappers. But it at least starts with an input. So it's something that an organization can go and have maybe somebody up at the front desk and have this available where you could actually go and and input. These roughly going and laying out where a legal description is. This is where it is. This is where we think it is. Sort of given an approximation and then have somebody in the back using actual ArcGIS online or ArcGIS parcel fabric. Now, actually couldn't, see this and find couldn't it. You just, couldn't you just take this uh, little service and just take it into Pro and use the Pro capability to do the snapping? That's exactly what we're going to do. Yes, that is correct. That's right. Yeah. All right. And so, then they could be on the back end doing all that. Um, you get it going on the parcel drafter, but then you bring it back here to actually do the real work. Whatever. That's exactly right. So the integration, let's go up to the one that I have actually done. The integration that happens. So let's just introduce what this is. This parcel drafter group right here is nothing more then my portal over to my parcel drafter again this is my arcgis online to my parcel drafter and i went in here and i took this service here and just said add it to my current map did nothing else brought it in here symbolized it so i can at least see it and read it it now is being displayed inside my current arcgis pro parcel fabric and this is the parcel fabric here so it displays sort of as just an extra set of, of information in here. If I wish to capture this, it's as simple as creating a, a record. All right, creating a record. And I create a record. I then can go and either select the lines or I can select the polygon that's been created. Let's go in and just select these lines right here. All right, and just to show you, here's my parcel drafter lines. Only select these, here they are here. And I could go and take those and copy them and paste them special into my lines for my actual parcel fabric. All right. By default, it automatically went to um, it went to move. But now that I've got them in here, I can actually also go and just select my polygon if I've got something in there that I wish to go and use for my attribution. And I can say, go ahead and create my seed for my record. Created my seed, say go ahead and build this out. All right, so I have gone and built that out. And I have, there's my polygon that it created with any attribution that might have been on there. So maybe there was a plan name on there, whatever. And I can just go and copy those attributes and paste them in here. Copy those attributes. Thank you, Frank. Okay. 
and paste them in here. All right. And I am done with this record. Let me go and do this. Let me clear it out. Turn these off so I can see. So there is my new record that I just created with my new parcels and my new polygon on here. So the question is, well, did any of my lines actually come over with any attribution that I have in here? And in fact, came over with the dis with the distance, but not the direction. All right, so at least brought that distance over, but it did not bring over the actual barrier. Unmuted. I okay. Um, any questions? Does anybody have any questions on this? Nope. All right. So let me see who is here. Andrea, I'm going to ask you to talk. So you've got this implemented with your ArcMap parcel fabric, and you've expressed to me issues with curves. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Can you create a replicate on the actual demo here? What sort of curve issues you might have had? Otherwise, I have one actually pulled up if I, I don't know if I can share my screen, if I can figure that out. We can. I Well, I can make you the presenter real fast. Go and do that. Go ahead and do that. All right. Can you see that? I can. Okay. Um, so yeah, this was a CSM that I just got the other day, actually. So our tax listing department uses the parcel drafter. So they kind of plot everything out um, from the recorded documents they're processing for tax listing. And then once they map it out, they put it in um, for me to map, bring into the arc map fabric. And most of the time it works. And like what you just ran through in Pro, it's a tool um, that I have to geoprocess to bring it into ArcMap. Um, it's polygons to fabric, I think. Okay. Um, so it runs a geoprocessing and brings it in unjoined, and then I join it. Um, but on almost every one that has a curve, it does something like what you're seeing. And at first, we weren't sure like what the heck it was doing. And then one day, I mean, I end up just remapping it. I remap it in arc map. I can't use the stuff that they mapped in parcel drafter. And the one day I remapped one and then went to join it and I saw where the radial lines were going and it lined right up with these kitty wampus crazy lines that the parcel drafter created. So I thought, well, why is it doing that? So that it seems like that's what it's doing. It's creating a boundary line where the radial lines for a curve are. And we can't figure out rhyme or reason why it's doing that. Interesting. I mean, if I go through the list of lines here, it says what the legal description is. Like they've inputted the bearing, the distance, the arc, radius, you know, radius and curve length. Um, matter if they put in the cord length or the arc length we thought well maybe that makes a difference it does not um but yeah we're not sure what the issue is why it does that can you do me a favor can you i'm gonna i'm gonna take the presentation back again can you very quickly andrea go and send me a copy by email of that csm and I'll see if I can reproduce parts of it here. Sure. Let's see and here if I can. From there. Um, our, yeah, our system was, I actually was in the office and had to come home <laughs> this afternoon and that went down. I'm um, sorry. So let me see if I can actually, oh, there. 
it wasn't connecting me in before. Let's see. So by the way, I mentioned that I that the next instance I, I went and actually created the lines. I copied the lines over and then it, from there I went and created the seeds and created the polygon. I could also have gone and created another record here. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy, I'm going to select the polygon and All right, I'm going to, come on. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that into my parcel layer. By the way, does anybody else get as, as sort of irritated by the fact that when I do a copy and paste in 2.6, it automatically uses that selected feature and makes it a move function. Um, I wish that it didn't do that. I wish it would just paste it and be done. All right, so I've gone in here and I paste it. Let's, let's sort of show you, there it is, paste it. If I'm going in and using the polygon, to create my actual parcel. I don't have to create seeds. I can just say, go ahead and build out my record and it will go and automatically build this together. I then am gonna go and go to align features just to verify it. I see that it is off a little bit. Maybe I am gonna go and and do this. I'll go ahead and select everything that's in my record and I'll go and I'll rotate it. Hold down my control key, put it here. Oh, I'm not, I am going to move it. Hold down my control key, move it down to here. I'm gonna move that over. When I do this, it looks like it's gonna move that line which it did. So how do I go and do this if I don't want to move that line? That was a facetious question. What I'll do is I'll tell it to go ahead and move this. Move it over here. Okay. Yes. Frank, if you if you tried to move it before you built it out, would that be any better? Not really, because what happens is within the parcel fabric, it automatically has topology enabled. So anytime I put something there and then try to move it, it calculates where the features are intersecting one another. So for me to move it, what I'll do is I'll automatically turn off my topology and it will only move my selected features here. It should only move the selected features here. I don't know why this line is still showing up as. There you go. All right, so. One of the issues is when I did they move, again, if since I had topology turned on still, it was trying to move everything that was connected in that area. So now I can go and do a rotate. Thank you, Andrea. 
I can go down here, move my cursor over this point and type in S. So I have a snap angle here. Gyration. Control key, move it on that point. Go over here, type S, move it in. Make sure that I'm connecting on that line on the snapped feature. Then I've gone and rotated this all in. So if I want to, I can now do a, an align features. And tell it one foot. And I can say, go ahead and align that. So we'll align everything in here. Thank you, Andrea. All right. So in using this, because the geometry that's being created over on the service is still pretty rough, it's still pretty, you know, it, it is very rough indeed what we're doing here. So I can see that, for example, that one that I created, it was not touching. So I normally would have gone and said, let's do in the last two, seven days here. Yeah, I've actually done quite a bit of work on here. There's my parcel again. Let me do an align parcel. Excuse me, align parcel. My active record. Here's what there was my anchor. I'm going to use that as good. See if it creates anything here. Let it go and align that up. Are we good? I just did a whole bunch of things that most of you haven't seen yet. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for there to be a question on this. No questions yet. None. Okay. So, Andrea, the CSM that you have here, is it just these three lots? So, it seems like we need to have some sort of enhancement request for doing uh, shared edges where we can uncheck the related data, like we can do in ArcMap, instead of actually having to turn off the topology. For the, for the movement of, of features inside of there? Yep. Um, that actually is not a bad idea to go and, and have that. Like I said, I, I've, I've found that you want to be very, very aware of whether or not topology is turned on. Matter of fact, to the point where I've gone and customized my ribbon, my parse, my records ribbon, my parcel ribbon, so that it has a topology pull down because by default it's over under the editing instead. So I've actually gone and customized it so that I have my topology over here because I find that while we're editing it, we have to be careful both in movements, copies, rotates. Once you've put it on top of something else, a record, a parcel on something else, and you attempt to move it, it will attempt to move everything else at that intersects also. You want to be careful with that. So you're right. There is There should be some sort of request on that to help with it. 
Thank there you. There you go. Ideas. Yeah. Ideas page. Yeah. <laughs> Ted, I, 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 I'm so glad that you're here this week, Ted. Um, have you done anything with, with um, Parcel Drafter and integrating it into Pro? No, nope, nope, nope. I actually moved from the county to the city. So okay. um, we have a cadastral group. Uh, one of them is actually on here. I, I, sent your, your, I sent these little links you guys have to everybody in the city. <laughs> but we're actually in the process of implementing Parcel Fabric and ArcMap. In my we're, moving off of work, we're moving off of workstation arc info as we speak oh out of out of info okay right. so we're moving to arc map and uh we we do have about 150 people using pro but we we do have a we have a, a parcel fabric upgrade from uh arc map to pro it looks pretty good i don't know the details on it but it takes about an hour and 10 minutes to run yeah you want to um, be careful want to be careful with it in that um there are some issues with the upgrades on there. Um, there's a lot of cleanup that has to be done afterwards. You know, okay. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I remember them talking about that. Um, yeah. But that's still probably six months to a year off, probably yeah. after we get off, once we get on our map. Um, I mean, these people have been using like a custom AML for the last 30 years. So our map to them will be like, uh, a beautiful interface, but Pro is much better than ArcMap. Yeah, but but definitely, definitely, and 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 it's interesting because I'm actually giving a presentation here in a couple of weeks on this, and then why go and move to Pro? And overall, I would I would say that Pro has a has better tools available than the ArcMap Parcel Fabric, and it's it's easier to understand. We've had less issues in migrating people over to the ArcGIS parcel fabric um, to the point where we're seeing a consistency that once you go in and do the upgrade, you do the initial training, you don't hear from them anymore. Whereas with the ArcMap parcel fabric, we are constantly hearing back from people. It's like, oh, how do I do this? And how do I do that? And, and with the ArcGIS yeah. parcel fabric, it's much easier to understand. Granted, there's still these little things in here like, well, because you're relying upon topology when you do moves and things like that, you have to be aware whether or not you have topology turned on or not turned on. Uh, but that that's minor issue compared to yeah, everybody but else. The, the big win is that you get to use all the other regular editing tools with yes. the fabric compared yeah. to ArcMap where you're kind of locked in your own little world. Yeah, and I, I actually can go and share with you, and, and Chris can, can share with you, we were recently doing some some subdivision mapping. And um, Chris, you've been with us now three years, is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so Chris initially learned how to do all subdivision mapping in ArcMap parcel fabric. And then he was the first one we moved over to Pro parcel fabric, and he was still tempting to take that ArcMap learning and directly relate it over to Pro, and he was struggling with it. And we finally had a discussion here in this past week that said, I, I, I said, the, the problem you're having is that you never learned how to map this before the parcel fabric. So I said, what really is happening is with, with ArcGIS parcel fabric, you're actually going back to the old classic way of building and thinking about these things. So once we got over that, suddenly it, it was easier. And I, I think, you know, you haven't had any problems since then, have you, Chris? No, I haven't. I mean, once yeah. once that was understood, it's been a breeze. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was just quite that was quite a, a a tangent we got off on. Sorry about that, Ted. I just I was happy to see you here. Uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, haven't we haven't talked much since holistic. So, um, yeah, I'm yeah. glad you're here. Um, yeah, and it is a good idea. Maybe we should go and have some sort of option on the moves or at least something to say whether or not we want to go and continue to use uh, topology for this move or whether we want to disable it. Um, it's a good idea. All right. Um, so Andrea was, was good enough to go and send me a, a CSM on here in which uh, we have an overall boundary Boundary here, boundary here, boundary here. Of course, we have to use 
line table and curve table. Let me see if I can make sure I have that curve table available to me here. Where's the curve table? Maybe I'll use this instead. I'll use the legal description on here. Wait, weren't you just sitting on the curve table? I just saw yeah, you were just on the curve table, but yeah, I usually just use the survey. Yes, the curve table. Yeah, I'll just use the survey description in here. Otherwise, you got to scroll back and forth. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, okay. So I'm pulling it up on a, a copy of it that's over on my my other screen. So we're not going to obscure everything that's that's here. All right, let me go and situate this. All right. Okay. So let me just assume we're putting it in a certain place. Let's turn on these again. Let's go back here. And I'm just going to assume we're going to do it somewhere in here. Uh, yeah. Set also point being the point of beginning. Then 89.4038 southwest along the south line of here, a distance of 177.62 feet. You've got an extra one in that bearing. Do I? You said 89.40, right? Yeah, I did. Thank you. No that's problem. My, that's my, uh, unfortunately, that's my, um, let's, let's do this again. 89.40. Three eight southwest or one seventy seven point six two feet. All right. Thank you for catching that, Chris. Seventy three fifty seven oh eight, and that's northwest along the center line of the road, one ninety one point eight five feet. All right, then 59.3608 Northwest. By the way, I've always found this is one of the most boring things to watch. Somebody else going and transcribing a legal description. Then 70.5608 Northwest along the center line, 147.81 feet. Then 002652 Northwest, 375.84 feet. Then it's along a curve to the west, having an arc length of 362.33, a radius of 650, and a delta angle of this accord bearing of 73.3458 northeast so here's an interesting thing i'm not sure how to actually input the cord bearing here um, i'm assuming it's just a simple one but and i when i try cb it tells me that's an an invalid bearing so um i'm not sure so well, I did, Frank, was you put in your length, whatever length it gives you, and then as soon as you put the radius, it knows that it's a uh, curve. Okay, so this is the arc length, I believe, right? Yeah, like I went into my settings and made sure it was doing arc length and not cord length. That's always my default that I go into. Radius and arc length, okay. All right. 
But yeah, as long as a radius goes in the box, it knows that it needs to be a curve and not just a straight line. An arc length of 362.33 feet and a radius of 650 feet. And I'm going to do a negative there. Is that what it's supposed to look like? That's a long curve to the right, having an arc length of 179, a radius of 161, a delta angle of this, and a core bearing of 89.3028 northeast. And an arc length of 179.24, and a radius of 161.00. All right. That's 58.3552 southeast, 101 feet. Then 31.5. 2408 northeast, a distance of 66. Then say tangent curve to the left, having a radius of that. Does the, draft, does the drafter allow you to, to, to extract out the, the tracks as a file? Uh, I don't think it does. Uh, I'd be good enhancement. Uh, well, too. I think it um, it allows you to go when you go to do an edit of Traverse, it actually goes and assumes it, but I don't know whether it's actually assuming what was previously uh, input in there or not. It's a good test. It's a good test. So of course I lost my spot here. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Um, this is northeast. All right. A, an arc length of 255.71 and a radius of negative 606. All right. A curve to the right. Word bearing 23.4523 northeast. Having an arc length of, sorry. Wouldn't it be nice if I had this all already written out, kind of like what most demos do, but I don't. Dense East, 700.39. To the west line of Kettle Rain and south 00. 0. 0.2825, southwest along the west line 1221.69 feet, to south line and then 89.3232, or excuse me, 35, 32 southwest along the south line, 661.32 feet. It does close.
wow, 17, I might have input something different, but it, it does close, close enough for this. So Andrea, do you think this is good enough for us to go and proceed with? Yeah, see what it does. <laughs> that's, that's... Just of, um, yeah, you have a misclosed distance of 17 point something. I had a misclosed distance of 21 point something. I'm not uh, certain why, because I went and said save and it says this, it did not close. It wouldn't create it. Okay. Yeah, I got that same error. So let's do this. Let's, um, for this last one, let's force it, all right, by going and digitizing this in here, all right? Okay. So why is it still? So you've got that extra, so it automatically creates the next bearing when you're hitting enter. Right. Now, I thought you need to just delete that last line then, because it's going nowhere, right? Would you just delete that bearing out of the box? So I deleted that previous one. So I should be going down to here. And now I should be able to go and just digitize to there. And it still notes that it's it's um, misclosing somewhere. But it automatically does go ahead and put this line in, beginning of this line here. Right. So let's just go ahead and save these lines. All okay. Right. When that issue first started happening, I was seeing that, oh, they were, the tax listing was leaving that bottom line. And I thought, well, it doesn't know where to go. So then it creates these crazy lines. And I was getting a better result deleting that last line. But then it uh -huh. started doing it whenever. So then I thought, well, that didn't solve it. <laughs> Okay, so let me go ahead and Fine. I will force this to close. Why don't I just do this? All right, and let's go ahead. We already have a record here. Let's go ahead and use that. While it geographically did not close, does it create a seed? It does not. All right, so let's turn these off. looks like that actually does close. Is it because it's got bad cocoa on it? I don't think so. Let's go and create another record just to make sure. What I'll do is I'll just go ahead and select just these. I'll select this. I'll just have this and I'll go and assign. Interesting. I thought I would, I should have to go and I create a new record here. All right. I should say assign these. Oh, because I didn't copy and paste them. Duh. Sorry. Copy. Let's paste them in to the
Let me go back here to the modified, make sure I get off of any tool that I'm on right now. Only select these. Get rid of these. And now I can go to my copy. And I go to paste special. Do it to my lot lines. So I have them here. Can I create a seed? It does create a seed. Previously, when I went to create a seed, they weren't actually in my record because they were still over on the other site. And let me go and select these here. Let me just make sure if I update the Kogo on these. They differentiate more than a foot. You know, Andrea, they look like um looks like it's coming in correctly. Or at least Yeah, I mean you it looks like it's fine for you. I'm just wondering what they did differently that it created the weird I don't know. Because I, I didn't I didn't force it to close on my side, so I just said save and it doesn't there's nothing there for me to even see because it doesn't create anything. And I don't think it's a misclosure thing that they're missing. I mean, everything that they send over my way, it says that, you know, it closed. Right. Um, and this is still an arc map, which has radial lines yeah. and radius points and things like that. So um, I don't know. We'll have to look. But at it. This is parcel drafter, though, not necessarily. I mean, you, you can use parcel drafter in either arc map or pro. So. I mean, you created it in the parcel drafter. What version of the drafter are you in? Yeah, this is the latest one. And that's what I'm wondering. I mean, we thought, I don't think we're able to upgrade our version until we get our, uh, it, I think it has to do with our servers, you know, that we've got to have the that's a, that's, that's upgrade another, the different version. Yeah, that's another important point, Andrea. You're actually using it on your premises, this is this is the parcel drafter widget for ArcGIS Online, so it may okay. have been updated a little bit more. Um, now, could they see. potentially, if we decided this, are we able to use this one online and still go into ArcMap with it or not? Probably not. We'd have to go. Um, into Pro. My suspicion is that because ArcMap doesn't allow you to edit real time the data that's yeah. on ArcGIS online you actually have to go and download it as a as a form of um a sort of a temporary file geodatabase on your machine and then it has to be updated that because of still working in ArcMap you might have some problems with it but right. with pro because we can automatically attach to it and and, and do that we, you know, it's, it doesn't cause us any real issues on there. Right. Because that, I mean, that's what we were thinking is the ultimate fix is when we're able to get the latest, greatest version of Drafter. We're hoping that they maybe fix whatever issue or glitch, bug, whatever it is in some of the older versions of the Drafter. Right. Right. Yeah. Un un unfortunately, it's going to have to be a, you know, work out through Esri. On yeah. Day. Well, I mean, it's good to see that it actually does work. <laughs> yeah. And again, this is the recognize this is the the latest version of it, and it is a version that's working against hosted feature services on ArcGIS Online. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for us, it just they spend the time mapping it. It doesn't work. So then I end up just having to remap it. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Map without you know, using the, the drafter polygon. Well, you could, and, and I'm, I'm saying this somewhat facetiously, you know, firmly with my tongue in my cheek, 
<laughs> could you, you could always go and use ArcGIS Pro to go and access it and then copy and paste it local or or somehow do it that way. Unfortunately, you can't edit ArcMap Parcel Fabric in Pro. No. And you can't you can't edit ArcGIS online in ArcMap. So we sort of have that barrier between it right now. Right. Yeah. Sorry. And it's only curved ones. I mean, if it's a straight out rectangle or whatever, all straight lines, I'm usually able to use whatever they've plotted out in Drafter. Right. And it works slick. I mean, it's nice. Yeah, it, it you can see it, it. That's a fairly complex legal description that I just did. And once I sort of went over. Yeah, that one unfortunately had a lot of curves in it. <laughs> yeah, but, but once, you, once it went over, and again, we still don't know why it didn't close. But yeah, I don't know. You could actually go and take this and and clean it up. And again, I I probably should have paid a little bit more attention to it. But it looks kind of like it was supposed to look, um, but it just doesn't close. So something's wrong in that legal description. So more yeah, that whole asking, area. Mark, I ended up having to remap some old stuff actually in that area. There's some gaps and overlaps. <laughs> right. So Mark was asking me. Yeah. Uh, so, Mark in the chat window, I noticed when I was flipped over there, um, Mark was asking whether or not you could go in and go back to here and re-input the bearing and distance for that closing so that you could actually close, you know, it would actually close on it. Was that what you were asking, Mark? How would you? No. Mark and I noticed that you had accidentally deleted the distance for that southern line, uh, and we were wondering how you would put the distance back in. If you go back to Pro, you can see. Okay, so yeah, how would I put it back into the parcel draft or or into when when we were in Pro and right. you were building that polygon? See the zero on the southern line. Yes. You accidentally deleted the distance and he wanted to know how we would add that accurate distance back onto the into the attributes of that line. On oh let's let's see if we can do that. So if I actually I think go you into, could, can you edit that? Well, if um if I go in here and just have that select there you thing. go. So six hundred and sixty one. And this is the lot parcel. Let me make sure that I have. It looks like it's not going to allow me to go and edit. So Would you have is, to edit it in drafter first or no? There is the arc length on here. So if I say 661.36 here, there we go. There you go. So did it go back to here? I don't know if I can capture that again. To actually see what the actual dimensions are because this this edit traverse which is how you actually go and capture a traverse mm -hmm. you actually have to click on the polygon not on the line to go and do that so i don't think i can edit this thing now because it's not a full polygon built in here but if i go and turn this off So let's let's experiment. Let's let's do something a little crazy here. If I go and select these lines, and then I select these lines here. All right, and turn this off. I don't want that. Select those lines. Can I go in here and Construct a polygon on this. I can. 
And then if I go back here, can I refresh this? Look at that. So I've actually gone in there. I've fixed it now. Oh, it still won't, still won't fetch those lines. Nope, not able to do that. It will get those. So Ted, to answer your question, or to, to sort of build on your question earlier, whether or not I could go in and populate something that wasn't populated or whether I can go in and select this and, and capture those values, it will allow me to go and select on a parcel that's been created with the parcel drafter. And it then goes and uses the related lines and returns the values that are stored on those lines. So the question is, can I go in here and say 49.00 feet to do that? Um, and then save this. I probably could. And what am I seeing here? What's on the display for this? Fifteen point four nine. is supposedly doing rounding the distance field. But this looks like this is metric. This is meter. Interesting, yeah. So I'm not sure you can actually go in and fully go backwards and forwards on this. You should be able to. It does say that it's now 49 feet. All right. So what are the questions? What other things do we want to explore with this on here? Um, it's, it's a very interesting early attempt at being able to go and, and input legal descriptions, both for use in parcel fabric and, and regular desktop type mapping, as well as provide some limited functionality for others. I can share with you that that's one of the things that I've been doing for a couple of years now, ever since ever since uh, Esri and, and the Land Dev team and Chris Biscaglia in, in, in particular, since they put together this parcel drafter, whether it was D-drafter or parcel drafter, one of the things I've been pushing for them to do was find some way that you could do an aliquot description, not just a meets and bounds description. So I could say, well, maybe I want to see, you know, 20 feet off of this parcel here. So I could start a parcel and maybe I do this. Maybe I go and tell it, um, yeah, let me go back here. Maybe I tell it, um, start point here again. Wow. Here, update it to here, and then to here. I'll say maybe this is supposed to be 20 feet. And 
and then I want to go. No, yep, that's not doing it. This is looks like it's. Yeah, not happening. So I've sort of challenged them to see if there's a way to go and allow us to do aliquot against this to so that we could, you know, let somebody up at up at the front desk or a deed lister or somebody just sort of running out a deed be able to go and say, well, let me go parallel to a line. Or if you're in a a public land survey system, a rectangular system, maybe you want to be able to go and just draw things in and cut them up and figure out where halfway is. Um, I would like to see if they could go in and extend sort of the functionality on here. Um, they've pushed back and said, well, that really is not what this is designed for. This is really designed just to sort of do meets and bounds descriptions and and input those that way and it it kind of works i i know several counties that utilize this daily to go and do this um and so i don't know i is is it something that it gave them a way to go and experiment with inputting the values that we need and creating feature services that might be incorporated later into real parcel drafting um, and I think it's sort of a success. It doesn't take long to go and, and implement and put up there. Um, and it's something that's fairly simple to use. And as a, you know, as a, as a mapper, I can go in here and I can do clean up when, you know, I, I think that something needs to get cleaned up. I can go in here and, and make some changes on here and can, And why won't it let me go and select this thing right now? Oh. There we go. So it allows you to go in and handle all of that. Um, Mark made a comment. I don't think they want to do too much on the web. They don't want people to per they, they want people to purchase desktop. Um, Mark, stick around. After we finish and get into office hours, I've got a discussion on that that we want to get involved with. Um, so um, it's that's I think there's some interesting things coming up that I just don't want to put on the recording here. All right. So is there any other comments on here? Anything else that we want to talk about? Any other questions that any of you have? Um, if not, speak now. All right, if not, then I'm going to go and stop the recording on this. Um, hopefully you got something from it. And thanks for attending. And we hope you enjoyed this workshop. If you have questions, would like some more details about anything we discussed during this workshop, or if you or anyone at your organization would like information about training, support, or ways in which we can help you with your GIS needs, please contact me at frank at pandaconsulting.com or call me at 561-691-3277 and we can discuss how we can help you with your needs.